All right, guys, today we're going to make a jack-o'-lantern using Adobe Photoshop Elements. In your dock, here you have a uh, little blue rectangle that says PSE. You can click that. And this will load. There's a possibility it will ask you to register. Just tell it never register if that comes up. And you should come up with a page that looks like this. If uh, you do have that page, just choose Start from Scratch. If it comes up looking like this, you go to File, New, Blank File. Either way, you'll come up with a page that looks like this. We're going to go ahead and call this Pumpkin. And I've already got mine set up here. You want to have your width at 500. Make sure you choose Pixels. Height, 500 pixels. Resolution, 300 pixels per inch. Color mode, RGB color background contents white. When you have all that done, you click OK, and a new window will open up showing you kind of your blank page that we're going to work from. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to make a black background so it's easier to see what we're working with. We're going to go down here to foreground color, go way down in the bottom right hand corner and choose black, just like some of your other applications you've used before. Take that paint bucket and drop it right in there. Okay, now we're ready to start creating our jack-o'-lantern. First thing we need to do is we need to create a new layer. That's this little square right here is the new layer button. And you see a new layer pops up. That checkerboard just means that it's there. It's kind of like a transparency because there's nothing on it yet. On that new layer, we're going to use the ellipse tool to make a nice big orange circle to start our pumpkin. Now in order to do that, we need to change our foreground color again to kind of an orange, uh, pumpkin-y orange there. And you need to use the ellipse tool, which right here, this looks like, probably for you, it looks like that. Click and hold on that button right there, and you see ellipse tool. Now you want to make your circle about as big as you can and not have it go off the edge. So, doesn't have to be perfect. But see, I didn't go off the edge in any direction here. Okay. Um, that is your first layer of your pumpkin. Okay. Uh, now to give it a little bit of a more three-dimensional look, you're going to put a high inner shadow on that. And up in your effects area, it probably looks like this. You choose the second one, it's called layer styles, it's two rectangles stacked on top of each other. You're probably at bevels. Click that, change to inner shadows. And if you just hold your mouse over the top of it, it'll tell you what kind of inner shadows they are. We want the high inner shadow. Okay. Now, we're going to create the uh, kind of ridges on the pumpkin now using the same ellipse tool here. This will probably take three or four of these. And it doesn't have to be perfect when you first do it. I created one. I'm going to use the move tool. See how it puts handles there. Set this right centered, and we want to make sure the top edge and the bottom edge are even uh, with the top and bottom edge of the back layer. And then we'll widen this out. You see, it's already got the inner shadow on it. And when you have it set how you want it, just hit return, or you can click this little checkbox right here. I'm going to go to the ellipse tool again, kind of do the same thing. Make sure that snaps together there. Set these so you can kind of start seeing the ridges on that pumpkin now. I'm going to hit return, tell it OK. And I think I need one more probably. And get those to snap together. You know, too narrow, you notice that shadow covers everything. Okay, when you have it how you want it, you hit return. Okay, you see there are four layers of ridges, you might have five. Okay, and again, the smaller oval covers the larger ovals. If you have this on the wrong layer, for example, the big circle covering them, those are still there, you just can't see them. Okay, so make sure you have those in the right order. 
Okay, your next step is you need to create a new blank layer above all of your pumpkin layers. So I'm going to hit the new layer button again, and oops, I created it in the wrong spot. That's no problem at all. You just click on that and drag it to how you want to stack it. So we have it on top now. We're now going to draw the uh, mouth of our jack-o'-lantern. The tool you're going to use to do that is the uh, polygonal lasso tool. Yours probably looks like this. You just click and hold, go down to polygonal lasso. Okay? And here we're going to draw our mouth. You can do whatever style of mouth you want. And when you bring it back together, it's kind of hard to see, but a little circle uh, appears there showing that you've brought that full circle and it's connected again. Okay, when you're done, you'll see this uh, marching ants sort of uh, lines. Okay, we need to fill that with a solid color before we do our next thing. So it doesn't really matter what the color is right now, so I'm just going to choose my paint bucket tool and click in there. <coughs> and now we're going to... Uh, Put a little gradient in here, transition from one color to another to make it look uh, kind of like a candle burning inside of there. So we're going to choose foreground color, go to yellow, kind of like a candle that would be burning. Your background color, something in the white area, white range. I'm thinking inside of the pumpkin, so I give it a little bit of color. Okay, so there's my two colors. I need to choose the gradient tool, which is this yellow to blue gradient. Then I'm going to choose the second style of gradient up here. So you hold on to that. That says radial gradient. And now you'll see if I drag it just a little bit, you see that yellow, and most of it is that uh, off-white color. A little bit more of a drag, you see brighter yellow to the off-white. I kind of like that right here, just how I have it. So I'm going to call that good, and now I'm going to draw my eyes and nose. Oh, one step here that I almost forgot. We need to put a low inner shadow on this. So while it's still selected, I'm going to go back over here to inner shadows, and the second one is called low inner shadow. Okay, so that gives it a little bit of a 3D look. I'm going to go back to my lasso tool, and I'm going to draw an eye. I want to do my other eye and my nose at the same time. If I hold the shift key, you see a little plus show up by my lasso, that means it's going to keep the one that I already selected and I'm going to be able to select another one. So remember I hold the shift key when I'm switching there. I'm going to hold the shift key again to do my nose. Okay, I'm going to fill those with a color. You notice they already have the shadow on them. Then I'm going to go to gradient. Notice that only went in the yellow, but if I drag it out a little more, you kind of see some yellow showing up there. Okay, and I'm going to go with that right there. And now I'm going to deselect those. I can go up to select, deselect. Okay, over here you see all of my face layers, pieces together on one layer. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make those all one piece. Okay, we want to make the whole pumpkin one thing. We don't want the background, so we want to make that invisible. There's a little eye right here you can click, and that hides the background layer. So now we want to merge everything that we see together. We're going to go to Layer, Merge Visible. And you see now all of those are on one layer together. If you haven't merged with your background, if that black is together with the pumpkin, uh, you need to undo and redo it without the background connected. Command Z is the fastest way to undo. Okay, our next step is we are going to make this pumpkin look a little more realistic by kind of flattening out the top, so it's not a perfect ball. Flatten out the bottom. To do that, you need to go to Filter, Distort, Liquify, and it'll open a new window. Looks something like this. To do that right, your brush size should be 350, pressure 50, turbulent jitter 70. You put the bottom of the brush on the top of the pumpkin, click and drag down slowly, and you see how it kind of flattens that out. Do the same thing at the bottom. Put the top of the brush on the bottom of the pumpkin, drag up slowly. Okay? Now, if you accidentally mess up and go something like that, oops, 
you can just hit revert and put it back. You've got to adjust your brush size again. And you keep doing this till you get it kind of how you like it. And I'll call that good. Go ahead and click OK. And now we have our pumpkin. Okay. The last thing we're missing is a stem. Okay. Um, anytime I do something new, I want to do it on a new layer. So I'm going to create a new layer, new blank layer there. Paintbrush. Okay, I'm going to go with kind of a solid brush, 13 point is good. Pick a color that I think maybe the stem should look like and go kind of brownish, greenish. And I'm going to paint what I think a stem should look like. Okay, and I'm going to fill that in. Okay, now right now that looks kind of fakey on top of our pumpkin. So we need to try some things to see what we can maybe do to make it look more realistic. Let's try a high inner shadow. And I don't really think that's great. I'm going to undo by pushing Command Z. Try a low inner shadow. Yeah, a little better. Still not sure I want that. Undo that. What I really like is this noisy inner shadow, okay? And that's going to be my finished pumpkin. Last thing I want to do is I want to put that stem with this pumpkin. It's the same steps as putting the pumpkin together. Make the background invisible. Go to Layer, Merge Visible. When you're all done, you should have two layers, one background layer, one pumpkin layer. And that is how you complete your pumpkin. Make sure you save. It'd be called pumpkin.psd. Um, you should have it saved to your computer folder. Go ahead and hit save. And you are done.